you have been working in China for over 30 years. Um, what are some of the biggest changes in the Chinese society that have impressed you the most? Um, well, I, I first came here 35 years ago. Um, and I came to study at Fudan University in, in Shanghai as part of a degree in Chinese in, in the UK. Things like Pudong and, and the massive investment there hadn't, hadn't started. So, you know, that massive transition there has been there, um, not only in Shanghai, but of course now across the whole of China, um, even in, you know, second and third tier cities has been hugely impressive. So that, that change, that economic miracle is, is very visible one. So I think that that's part of what um, is so impressive about um, the commitment to economic development and to securing, you know, economic, um, su you know, sustained economic development for, for people, bringing so many people out of poverty as well. I think that's an area where China deserves um, incredible credit. Um, and then you look at what's happened um, from the point of view of individuals for the rest of the world. You may never have been to China, but China's come to you. So wherever you go in the world now, there are Chinese tourists. And that's great to see. Those are people who are, you know, 30 years ago, I don't imagine that they thought they would ever um, do that sort of thing either. And so to be witness to that is an incredible privilege. Uh, this is the 40th year of the British Council in China. And as we know that the, the British Council has carried out a fair number of uh, cultural exchange programs in China. So how did this program programs help facilitate mutual understanding between the two countries? Well, um, luckily for us, there's um, a lot of research about what many people call soft power, but we prefer to call it cultural relations. So it's about building relationships and partnerships, about building networks of people in different countries, so across cultures, across backgrounds, um, and that you sustain those networks um, for mutual benefit. So it's not a power play, um, it's about the cultural relations that, that drive that idea of trust and understanding. And there's a lot of research that shows the more that you you listen to people, you, you look at how uh, the different perspectives um, in, in different cultures or from different countries, from different genders, that um, the more that you build that understanding, you, you may not agree, but you may agree to disagree, but on the basis of a greater respect or understanding of where people are coming from, that that in itself builds trust, and trust is a very important thing between countries, that you don't necessarily jump to conclusions before you've tried to think through where is that person coming from, and trusting that, you know, from the beginning people are well-intentioned to build, you know, a productive, benefit beneficial relationship in terms of intercultural connections. So yes, um, 40 years in, in China, and more than 80 years globally, and we're in 115 countries. Um, China is our biggest single country operation. And I think for me over the last six years, one of the things that I'm most proud of is that um, you know, over that time, we started a program called Generation UK, which is specifically geared at bringing more young people from the UK out to China. Um, so again, that mutual benefit, um, that greater understanding um, of different um, cultures to build trust. And over the last um, last few years, so this year we're celebrating five years of Generation UK, we've doubled the number of um, British students coming to China. Um, so that I think that's very important that they, they are able to experience China. Many of them do an internship. Many of them stay here. <laughs> so And it's not just about learning the language, it's also about studying here in other subjects as well. So I think that, that has been an enormous um, sort of engine of um, creating that sort of greater trust between our two countries. So it's a fantastic bedrock um, of individual connection. Mm -hmm. And a part of British Council's work is to enhance the understanding of China in the UK. So how is Chinese culture received among young people in the UK? Well, I think I think there's a big thirst um, for um, you know for Chinese culture. Um, you you only have to look at um, when there are representatives of Chinese culture um, on the stage or at festivals or you know playing music in in the UK. 
the um, you know the fantastic response there is to that. You know, ticket sales are a great indicator of um, how much something is valued because people want to see and experience it. People, people know of the you know the great celebrities like Lang Lang and the great orchestras like the Shanghai Symphony Orchestra. Um, but also, I think, you know, an increasing um, awareness of um, some of the promoters um, who are bringing um, new ways of new art forms or um, different parts of the culture to, to the stage in, or to public attention in the UK. So um, there's great um, companies like the Tao Dance Company that is based here in in, in Beijing, it has a, a relationship with Sadler's Wells, which is one of our you know, most important theatres in London, to bring um, modern dance to the stage in, in London and, and vice versa. Um, so those um, collaborations, those partnerships, are increasingly also moving to co-creation. So Chinese artists with British artists um, creating something together. Um, actually, China and the UK share a lot of cultural similarities. Uh, for example, both countries have a long history and uh, boast a, a rich mix of traditional cultural heritage. So against this backdrop of globalization, how can we learn from each other while at the same time maintaining our own unique cultural identities? Well, I think, I think it's about confidence in, um, in what you're doing and what you're seeking to represent as well. And I think absolutely, um, you know, China should be confident that there are great audiences for Chinese culture overseas and for the richness of Chinese culture as well, in the same way that the UK, um, you know, we have fantastic assets in terms of cultural um, heritage and, and, and creative sector more generally in the UK that we, we want to share with the world and I think that is the same with, with China so that, that idea that you're, you're sharing um, something that you consider to be um, you know such a powerful identity of your country with others is a very powerful message right? and, and people are very interested um, in, in the richness of Chinese cultures. We, we had um, for example last year a Scottish lady who came here to work in Yunnan with some of the, the minority cultures there around crafts and you know the, the sustainability of some of the craft communities and on the basis of the work that she did there she actually won an international prize and that brings to the attention of the world stage that 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 culture there in Yunnan that is so important to those communities to maintain and grow and develop and it may also be part of their economic development plans as well so if we can give a, a world stage to that and if China can give a world stage to some of our work that's where the UK and China you know, we have a cultural exchange agreement um, between the UK and China that was first signed in 1979, so 40 years ago, that led to the establishment of the British Council in China. You, you mentioned that you studied at Fudan University over 30 years ago. Um, what inspired you to come to study in China in the first place? Um, well, it's a long story, but um, I, um, I when I was six years old I saw a movie um, about China and, and so that stayed with me um, when I was choosing what to do at university um, and luckily by then it was possible to study Chinese and to come to China for a year as well so China had opened up in that period and uh, so that it just was it was driven by that film and that idea that really I needed to come to China to kind of find the real me um, and, and that's that's what happened. And then, so I've spent most of my adult life in China now, and I have two adopted Chinese children. And so China is a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. In which part of Chinese culture appeals to you the most? Oh, I mean, the thing I like about well, the thing I love about China is is that richness I mentioned before. That um, doesn't matter where you go in China. Um, it you know there there is a, a very um, you know, very, very warm and um, energetic connection to um, local culture. Um, well, the physical landscape has often changed with, you know, a lot of urbanization, but actually, you know, people's connection to their culture through the food, through the local 
songs and music and through um, local storytelling about the original culture of those, those areas, that, that really hasn't changed at all. It may be fancier surroundings, but it, you know, that love of, of local dishes and so on. So a big part of my love of China is, is trying the food. <laughs> so, yeah. well, what would Thai or Chinese food do you like? I think I think probably Sichuan food, Chongqing food, because I spent five years in, in Chongqing, and and actually, you know, I think you you come out of um, living in Chongqing, and if it isn't spicy, it doesn't taste of anything at all. So, um, you know, I, I think that helps to shape um, your future taste buds as well. So, no, but I, I love Chongqing food and uh, and Sichuan food more generally. I like uh, spicy food. I like Hunan food as well. Um, and also um, some of the food in, in Yunnan is also quite spicy.